I could scramble, I'd much rather scramble against a 79 speed than 89 speed. Mm-hmm. All right. That is green. That is green. That is green. Um, no, uh, it is now. All right. Good evening, sports fans. Welcome to a late edition. Sorry to start so late. Technical difficulties Xbox side. We will now be shortly kicking off with number three undefeated Syracuse at four and three Clemson. Clemson is formidable nonetheless, number nine in the country in yards on offense and solid against both the the run and overall yardage against. In addition, Clemson has a tremendous 97, I believe, uh, halfback and sorry, 98 halfback in Travis Etienne, and the defensive line has two 99s with C. Farrell and D. Lawrence, both of which have a tremendous amount of speed. So this is overall going to be a very dangerous team. They are unranked at 4-3, and three, but that's because of some tough losses to some very good teams. The Clemson Tigers, not a team to be messed with. Thankfully, Chase and Kelly at wide receiver. He's the fourth wide receiver, and the starting left end are out. It's going to give uh, a little bit of help to Syracuse when scrambling to their right. Hi, everybody. Reese Davis with you, bringing you the EA Sports. Because you need a game. Football, 14, Life for game football. Presented by the margin Nissan. for error Innovation is so small. I mean, Syracuse is one half a step too late, late or too early, early and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. On this team, we fight for that inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw with our fingernails for that inch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning and losing. Between living and dying. I'll tell you this, in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that inch. And I know if I'm going to have any life, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that inch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now, I can't make you do it. You got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now, I think you're going to see a guy who will go that inch with you. You're going to see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're going to do the same for him. That's the team, gentlemen. Spanning more than 10 successful seasons and covering the country from California, Ohio, North Carolina, and Virginia, this is League One NCAA football. He kicks it off, and he got all of that one. Deep in the end zone, Feaster takes the knee. Up tight defensively. 
Hunter Johnson forced to scramble, gets one yard, and it's second and nine now. 11 personnel against the 3-3-5. Tight end switches from left to right. Omari Rogers gets 14 yards, and we see the hurry up from the Tigers. Overton, 12 yards and a first down, and again, as fast as possible here from the Tigers. Omari Rogers this time three yards and out of bounds as they throw into the flat and continue the hurry up. The tight end out on the left and flexed out looks like. The handoff wide to Etienne. He gets into space, he gets a 20 yard run. Good run blocking to the left. Quarterback scrambles, breaks the first tackle, and ends up with a 15-yard gain. It's now first and goal. That that is a travesty. You have my sympathy, Leon. Um, you, you war crimes have been committed against you. Hand off to Etienne up the gut this time. It's a solo tackle in the middle, despite good run blocking otherwise. It's a three yard gain. Second and goal, still hurry up. Shotgun now. Hand off is to Etienne. He breaks a tackle. And that's seven yards and a touch. I believe it, Leon. I absolutely believe it. Coach Spector says thanks for tuning in, and I'm sure he also sympathizes with the travesty that has been done to you by them giving you garlic naan instead of, uh, sorry, regular naan instead of garlic naan. <laughs> Coach Spector says, what's the point of regular non? And for Syracuse, try to keep pace in the BCS standings, and if that score holds up, they need this win badly. Clemson to kick. Excellent. With a effective running game and an, effect, uh, and an effective passing game, the Clemson Tigers brought the ball down the field in just under a minute and a half. It is now Syracuse's turn to see what they can do here in the first quarter, down by seven. We see the traditional five wide to begin the game. Custis makes the one-handed catch, has to lean back and put on the brakes in order to catch it, but it starts the ball rolling to second and eight. You know, you have a good point there, Leon. You really do. Neal, out of the spread. Flex gets seven yards to make it third and one. Good move by the defender to get off his blocker there. Preventing the first down. Shotgun wide trips this time. Neal still in the backfield. And it's a quarterback keeper to Tanuvasa. And he slides in the orange at midfield after a solid gain. Probably about 12 yards. No, maybe 15. 
First and 10 now on the 49. Clemson keeping a three down lineman set up. We have a uh, five wide here. Three, two, six dollar looks like. Tanuvasa doesn't like any of the looks. And eventually he gets it to Lofton, who man coverage on the slant eventually gets the space, but he needs time to get there, which Tanuvasa provides with the run, throws on the run to move it into enemy territory. A 3-3 against this shotgun normal halfback week. Heavy blitz. Tanavasa running out. He's got people chasing him. And he gets out of bounds after a three-yard gain pursued by multiple bears. I was making a Shakespeare joke. You Philistine. <laughs> Mo Neal, with another good second down handoff, gets to third and one again. So we're looking at another third down here. In the shotgun and five wide outs. Miracle catch, half a yard short, makes it fourth and inches from the 21, and the Orange are sending out the kicking unit. Etienne takes the knee this time. The Tigers will start on their own 25, and we'll see what they want to do. They're now up by four. They ran the ball extremely well on their last drive, and until this defense figures out how to stop it, I think they'll have no problem moving the ball. Johnson's first incompletion of the game as he throws it away just before taking the sack. To the last second, trying to make a play downfield, only to have this defense get to him. Got to do a better job maybe feeling things out a little bit, but at least he has the awareness and a toughness to sit in that pocket. It's second and ten. Ball on the 25. Pistol this time. Overton from the outside comes in and gets the 18-yard catch. And now we see the hurry-up resume again. And this time, Johnson is sacked. The screen to Etienne read instantly by the defense. It's a loss of four to make it third and very long. Complete. Almost picked off. 
Foster, good coverage, gets a hand on it and forces the punt. Schumacher will be the return man. Oh, excellent punt. Schumacher takes the kick. Gets about a 10-yard return, an excellent change of field position on the stop for Orange after the Clemson Tigers went down the field lickety-split to begin the game. You never like to have to play from behind, but a deficit this manageable shouldn't be in the front of their minds. They just need to go out there and play. It's Metcalf in the backfield this time getting the handoff, and he gets a seven-yard gain on first down to make it second and short. Second down, and they're going to need about three yards to pick up the first down. The drag route to Lofton gets three yards and then another seven more after the catch as Tanuvasa waits until he's in the flat. The motion triple option gets stopped for a zero-yard gain when Tanuvasa gets shoestringed at the line of scrimmage before he gets out of dodge or gets the pitch out. From their own 42-yard line, second down. They'll line up with five wide receivers. He scrambles. Wants to go long and does. And he's immediately tackled. Lofton for 40 yards. Genovasa extends the play, allowing Lofton to catch the ball in green space. A miracle pitch and a fantastic spin move as two guys committed to Mo Neal on the outside. He spun and beat them on the inside to get a fantastic first and goal on the seven. First down and they've got their eyes on that goal line. And Mo Neal muscles in from seven yards out. Take the lead for the Syracuse Orange here in Death Valley. Another excellent hit kick from Hoffrichter and another touchback for the Clemson Tigers. They continue to put 11 personnel on the field. And while they are behind, they know they can knock things up in a heartbeat. It's way too early to change your game plan. And a great hit just as the quarterback throws. 
And we'll see if uh, Clemson wants to get another play in in the quarter. They have been playing up tempo so far this game. I'm sorry, it is an incompletion. They are obligated to make a play. He has time in the pocket, but Hunter Johnson elects to throw it out of bounds. He doesn't like any of his options. It's now third and ten. The Orange have the Tigers right where they want them. Ooh, and they call the face mask on Kevin Green. Gives the first down regardless of where the ball was spotted. And they're going to call it first and 10 on the 50. From the 50. First down. Chance Phillips this time, nine yards to make it second and short, and the first quarter is finally over. Second and one now for the Tigers. They hand off to Etienne, who gets tackled after seven. And the hurry up continues. Etienne gets two yards when his offensive line gets no gaps for him on the left side. And more hurry up. And the quarterback is hit as he throws, but he gets it to Sean Alford, who breaks a tackle but is slowed down enough that he gets no more gain before he is hit by the second man third and five Rogers loses his man and gets into space 19 yards for the first down on third and five it's not quite first and goal but it's real close Etienne only one yard on the handoff that time. They're trying to stop the run here with a goal line defense. Looks like he flinched down there on the line. Ball start. That penalty will move him back a bit. Yeah, with so many young guys out there. And second and 14 is a big difference now. for the Tigers. It's second down now, 14 to go. Ball on the 14 yard line. It's a funky formation and Sean Alford gets the lateral pass to a three yard loss. It's now third and 16 from the 17. Hunter Johnson is sacked for a loss of seven, fourth and 23. We can expect a field goal unit here for Clemson to attempt to tie the game. Second 
after the sack, it's now fourth and long. Clemson is looking to tie things up. It has the distance, and he got it. And, and the Clemson tick kicker ties the game. But with how well Clemson moved the ball downfield before that last set of downs, you got to believe that the Orange are very happy. They consider that stop a big one, preventing a loss of the lead. Or uh, preventing giving Clemson back the lead. And Schumacher takes it out from deep in the end zone to the 22. Tanuvasa scrambles out. And the pass is off target. Second and ten. Second and ten. Ball of the 22. Shotgun split big here on second and ten. Keeper to Tanuvasa. He waits for his blocker. And does a good job to get a six-yard gain. Four down nine men against the eye. And Lofton playing tight end wide open for a 20-yard pitching catch and takes it out of bounds before getting hit too hard. Custis on the drag route and the spin move gets another two and a half yards to make it every coach's favorite down in distance, second and short. Metcalf up the middle, a four-yard gain out of the spread flex. This downfield run blocking by his other receivers gives Jamal Custis an extra seven yards after the catch when he turns inside and the defenders are pushed out of his way. Metcalf dives for the touchdown after a great move to keep the play alive.
country. This is a game we've been watching closely all day long. And for USF, they're doing their best to keep their perfect season alive. USF on top, 31-7. Touchdown difference, Reese, 17-10 here. Syracuse to kick this one off. Number nine, back to return. He just drills this one. Another deep kick for Hoffrichter. Clemson down by seven, just under four minutes to go in the half. This is one of those performances that the guys back in the studio in Bristol are going to be talking about. Oof, that one looks like it hurt. He's been able to get to the quarterback now a couple times as well. Well, all of his good plays have added up to his team enjoying the lead. four and six times for loss. With one quarter down, I really haven't seen too much separation between these two squads. Might be neck and neck the whole way. And the ball goes out quickly to DeAndre Overton, who gets the first down. And once again, Hunter Johnson calling, hurry, hurry, hurry. And Chance Phillips gets 23 yards, muscling his way through defenders. Here's the throw to the fullback, and he's tackled right away. Three-yard loss there. Really, they just had nowhere to go after the catch. Phillips, 39, tackled for, tackled for no gain to make a second and 13 after a couple of big plays for the Tigers. Second and 13 coming up here. Ball on the 45-yard line. Handoff to Etienne makes it five yards before the tackle. It's still third and long. Henderson Jr. with the solo tackle in space on the scrambling quarterback after Green flushes him out of the pocket. It's now a long field goal here from Clemson. And the field goal is missed. Syracuse now has 233, three timeouts, and they're on their own 38. That's solid field position to really do what they want, up seven points, and with the ball at the half. They're just thinking first downs. They drove the length of the field. And you think back to what that defensive coordinator tried to do. He tried to change some things up, but nothing seemed to work. It's going to be interesting to see. How he can have an on Neil out of the backfield. Tenovaso waits. He looked open and he waited till he got to the other side of the defender before making the pass. The clock starts. Lofton comes in motion left to right. And the pitch is off to Lofton. He's got tons of space. It looks like he's going to go all the way. But it's no secret that after that big run and that missed field goal, the Syracuse Orange are up by 14 points in Death Valley. Clemson with 217 and three timeouts. Most of that 
production for Etienne on the first drive as he's been slowly losing yards per carry since. Hand off to Etienne with fantastic blocking. He's shedding guys 18 yards before he's tackled. And more. Hurry up. And another big run by Etienne. Just sprinting down the field. He's just doubled his yards for the game with those two plays. Higgins comes in motion. And Johnson gets four before he's tackled. Two halfbacks in the backfield now. No tight ends. Flushed from the pocket. And they don't call it a... Oh, no, they do call it a sack. Zero yard loss. It's third and six now. And the Orange call a timeout. Five wide here. And Overton makes the catch. Defender tries to jump the route and is out of position. Lance back four yards. I believe his first catch of the game. Stopped in bounds. Clemson spends a timeout. Johnson sacked again, zero yard gain after flushed, sacked by Henderson, flushed by Green. And on third down, they hand it off to Travis Etienne who gets a 10 yard gain. They call a timeout from the 13 yard line. 48 seconds, one timeout, 13 yards. From the 13 yard line, it's first down. Overton comes in motion. Hand off to Etienne, and eventually he gets securely tackled after a seven-yard gain. The play clock now is just a second ahead of the game clock. And that's a huge sack, an eight-yard loss on Hunter Johnson. And it's third and long, and... Clemson forces Syracuse to call the timeout. It's the 11th play of the drive. He's under pressure. And he throws it away out of the flushed out of the pocket and finding nowhere to go. Clemson puts the field goal unit on the field. This is straight down the middle chip shot.
It's now 12 seconds to go. Schumacher just inside the end zone. And with a man coming free, he had no chance on the outside. Nine seconds, one timeout. And the pitch is out, but Lofton unable to get outside the last minute. Syracuse spending their last time out. Looks like they might try for something here. 71 yards away from the end zone. Tanuvasa scrambling out. He gets a first down and calls it a half. Um, do you mean how many seasons or temporally, Leon? Yeah, uh, like game seasons or 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 um, real lifetime. Um, so this is our third season uh, after the most recent restart. We set it, what? Um, and we set it, we used rosters that reflected the rosters um, for the 2018 NCAA regular season. Yes, yes, this would be 2020-ish. Uh, pers yes, this would be this would be 2020. Um, uh, a, a personnel year 2020. Quick look at some halftime stats here. Twenty-four to thirteen, Clemson leads in first downs, but is down by about sixty yards in total offense. Both teams already over the century mark in yards on the ground. Clemson so far, twenty passing attempts for the first half. That's quite a lot. One hundred and fifty-four passing for the Orange and one hundred and twenty-two passing for Clemson. Third down conversions are 66% to 50% in the favor of Syracuse. And time of possession is in Clemson's favor by 18 seconds. Tommy Tanuvasa is 10 for 11 with one touchdown for 100. 54 yards, that's a 94%. Versus Hunter Johnson, who is 15 for 20 for 122, no touchdowns, 75%. On the ground, Travis Etienne has 11 attempts for 99 yards. And Johnson has three attempts Sorry, nine attempts for a total gain of three. Some good, a long scramble of 15, but a number of sacks as well. Tommy Tanuvasa has the most rushing attempts, mainly because of scrambles. But Mo Neal uh, has one more yard. And James Lofton, with a massive 49-yard long run, the wide receiver caught the pitch, and he is the leader in rushing. Uh, 
Um, Lofton, 92 yards, the bulk of the offense for the Orange. Backed up by Custis with three catches for 27. Metcalf, one for 22. And Neal, one for 13. The last two out of the backfield. Clemson, 47 yards to Overton, 36 to Rogers, and 29 to Phillip. On the defensive side of the ball, Bush is leading the way, the freed safety. And Syracuse, Henderson Jr., eight tackles, three tackles for loss, as well as Green with three sacks. Uh, part of it, I would believe, you know, is that they now have a young quarterback. They lost. The, they graduated the quarterback who took them to multiple national championships as Schumacher tries to get to the outside and gets to the 29-yard line. Oh, that's why that didn't work. Okay. Shotgun Y trips. Metcalf out of the backfield. 
catches it and is decked, drops the ball to make it third and seven. Tanuvasa escaping the pocket. Gets a 15-yard gain and exits stage right. Pursued by five Tigers. The legs of Tommy Tanuvasa getting... Syracuse out of a tight spot on that one. First and ten. Ball on their own 44. Tanuvasa, quarterback keeper, gets eight yards. Second and two now. As we see Culpepper in in the spread flex. Handoff is to Neal. Neal is closing on what looks like a gap, and then he sees that the defender has beaten the blocker, and he makes a hard move to the other side to get first down. Tommy Tanuvasa back in the game. Shotgun normal. Halfback weak. Metcalf with the same kind of vision as Mo Neal has, seeing the D tackle come through the center. He makes a hard cut the other direction, turns nothing into something. That D tackle is a 99 overall. He is a formidable player. Five wide receivers now for the Orange. Custis catches it. Sandwiched between three defenders. He gets eight yards. Six of them after the catch. Once again, Syracuse Orange are at every coach's favorite down and distance. Second and short. Shotgun split, quarterback keeper to Tanuvasa. He slides down after the first down. It's first and 10 now from the 15. Town of Asa comes out in an I formation this time, prompting the four down lineman, Mo Neal. Gets a zero yard gain as the 99 right end comes off his blocker to stop Neal from getting to the outside. Flex bone now from the orange. Three, two, three, 
And Tanuvasa keeps the ball, gets four. It's third and five from the center of the field. And here's another third down. Tanovasa back in the eye. He's scrambling. He gets hit out of bounds. Doesn't like any of the looks. Gets hit out of bounds after no gain. And the Orange send the field goal unit onto the field to kick into a six mile an hour headwind from a chip shot. Right down the middle, it's now 27 to 13, halfway through the third. is still feeling the pressure of the passing game. Yeah, the secondary and linebackers aren't able to make a play at the point of catch a lot of times. And it always helps your offense when your defensive teammates are playing this well. There's got to be some sense of urgency to this offense right now. They don't have the luxury of wasting drives if they want to get back in the game. Rodgers, wide open, gets 16 yards. Travis Etienne only gets two yards as the defenders close on the runner. They sniffed that one out. The defender can't get to the quarterback fast enough, and when the corner dives, it gives free space for the first down and more to the wide receiver. Etienne up a wide open lane, 17 yards. Six-yard gain, that time on the motion option. Second and four now. Handoff is to Etienne. He breaks a tackle, but is eventually stopped after only a one-yard gain. It's now third and three in the red zone. Arnold tripped, but he gets the ball across the line. It's now first and goal. And again, another run to the left with Tim Arnold. Great run blocking there from the left side of the line. 
and it's a seven point ball game after this extra point. Deep in the end zone, Metcalf decides to bring it out. Gets it back to the 20 yard line. The Wildcat screen keeps them guessing, but it's only a one-yard gain as the defenders close in with speed. <laughs> Second and nine now for Tommy Tanavasa out of the spread. And he slides just a yard short to make it third and one. And Mo Neal gets more than the one he needed. He gets 12 for the first down. From their own 41 yard line, it's first down. Shotgun split big, closing seconds of the third. Quarterback keeper, he's got great space. 26 yard run. Everyone I see just walks the walk with gravity, but I just stay by and I wait by time. They say you gotta throw the line, they want the water, not the wine. But when I see the signs, I'll jump on that lightning bolt. lead is a touchdown. Smart check down play to Lofton, who can turn around, gets eight yards out of it, gets second and short out of a really bad look. It's second down, and they're about two yards away from the sticks. Go. 
And with the dive, Metcalf on the angle route gets a touchdown just under seven minutes. Sends it sailing downfield. This one's going to be down in the end zone for a touchback. Syracuse defense, they've got the it factor. The it factor, the swagger, whatever you want to call it. When they take the field, they know they're better than you. And it's a group of 11. They play like they know they're going to stop you. And here we go with the offense ready to get things going again. He's on the run. Decides to tuck it in, and he's got space. He's to the 40. Good tackle there. Hunter Johnson, 22-yard run, and still calls the hurry up. He scrambles, and the defenders can't stop him. Hand off to Etienne. Gets the six. And Etienne loses yards for third and four now. And the screen is sniffed out for another tackle for loss. It's fourth and eight now. With six minutes left to go, we'll see. Yeah, they, they do go for it on fourth and eight down by two scores. A miracle catch by T. Higgins. Miracle throw, miracle catch. Touchdown saving tackle on Travis Etienne. Etienne four yards this time as they continue to hurry up. Sean Alford, they call it a one-yard gain after four tacklers still hurrying up. And right as the guy gets across the line of scrimmage, the Syracuse Orange call a timeout. Third down, five yards to go. Ball on the 12-yard line. 
Third and five here. Handoff is to Etienne. And he gets six yards to get first and goal now. He's a 98 for a reason. And Tavian Feaster wide open in the back of the end zone. A big win for the undefeated and still leading this game, Syracuse Orange, currently number three. In other games, the Longhorns come into today's game ranked 15th in the nation. It felt as if the game rested on every play. The Longhorns win it 28 21. One touchdown ball game, Reese, 34 27 here. They line up to kick this one away. Nice kick, plenty of distance. He's to the 20. Metcalf gets stopped at the 15. Any good football team has to have an ability to answer. And that's exactly what we just saw. Mm -hmm. One team scores a touchdown, the other team comes right back. 444. Syracuse has spent two timeouts. But right now, the clock is their friend. They just need first downs. Any way they can get them. Tommy Tiny Vasa scrambles out. Didn't like the man coverage. Goes out of bounds after a five-yard game to prevent a harder hit, although there is still some extracurricular there, it looks like. Mo Neal, 13 yard gain. Right down the middle lane. That's going to move the clock under the four minute mark in just a moment. Tommy Tanavasa smartly holds on to the ball, not risking the pitch. Gets a two-yard gain on the quarterback keeper out of the split offset. O'Neal, another 11-yard run. Metcalf, 10-yard catch. Second in inches now, and a live clock. And in enemy territory.
Not liking the coverage. The orange run for it on the play action. Scramble out, and it's third and inches now. Short yardage situation here. It's third and one. Clemson spending their second timeout to stop the clock here. Handoff is to Metcalf. He has a wide open lane, 12 yards. Cost the final timeout. But first and 10, Syracuse now needs a turnover. Otherwise, this. Sorry, Clemson needs a Clemson needs a turnover. Otherwise, this game could be ended. Mo Neal with the handoff takes a seven-yard gain. But this time, James Lofton is wide open. For the touchdown, make it a two-score game with 107, no timeouts for the Clemson Tigers. Michigan and Michigan State, the Paul Bunyan Trophy at stake. Back and forth these two teams go, neither one giving an inch. We could be headed to a photo finish. Michigan State leads it 28-24. And we thank you, Reese Davis. Back to the action here. And it looks like they're ready for the kickoff. Number nine, back needs to return. And he got all of this one. Great kick. And it sails out of the end zone for a touchback. The Tigers have just not been able to get that offense rolling at all today. I think they're confused. I think it starts up front with the offensive line. They're not having the typical game that you'd expect to see from them as far as communication. I think it's affected the rest of the offense. And we see this offense again after what you, Kirk, call a very physical touchdown drive. Well, I say that, Brad, because the big hog mollies up front were able to create holes for the running game, and it helped them get the score. Let's see if they can do it again. He might not be able to get the pass off. And down he goes around the 43-yard line. Under a minute left in the game. It's third down, and they're just inches away from picking up the first down. A golden opportunity missed by the defense. That was a sure interception only to be dropped. That makes it fourth and inches. Looks like they've decided to go for it here. Syracuse called their final timeout. Intelligent decision. 
decisive play to pitch it out to the tailback on the option. He had more room to run and picked up some quality yards. Get on the throw. He caught it. Tackle around the 42-yard line. Spikes the ball. Here's the eighth play of the series. Quarterback all by himself in the backfield with five wideouts. With the pass incomplete. Boy, he put so much heat on that ball. I don't think anybody wanted to get their hands on that. That makes it fourth and 12. The offense is going to stay on the field and try to convert another fourth down. There. Congratulations to that defense. That's going to be the ball game. Pretty good looking touchdown drive the last time these guys were out there. They'll line up with five wide receivers. Gets it out to his receiver in a hurry. Lofton with a big gain to pad the stats in garbage time. That's a impressive win against a t very good team with a very good roster uh, that is simply having a down year, I think particularly because of the quarterback. Not used to not, not used to the to, to, to quarterback play of this caliber Tommy Tanuvasa on the other hand a great game at the helm as well as good supplement with the running game going for good yardage frequently to Metcalf and Neal really really helped uh, rest control out of Clemson's hands after that first drive where they scored Overall, a, a good game, a well-rounded game uh, by the Syracuse Orange. Thank you for joining us for the first of our double header. We'll be following this up shortly with Air Force and Navy. An impressive game by Tommy Tanavasa and James Lofton. Henderson and Green backed up by Ellison with another 10 tackles. 8-0 now for the Syracuse Orange.
Ladies and gentlemen, we will be kicking off here in just a minute or two for the second game of our League One doubleheader, a rivalry game, a battle for the Commander-in-Chief's trophy between Arch Nemesis Air Force and Navy. Two academy teams with excellent academics and a spirit about the game that transcends the sport. One of the few games where the players on the field are willing to die for your right to watch it. Stay tuned. We'll be kicking off momentarily. As we see here, Air Force, sixth in the nation in rushing, facing off against the seventh-ranked rush defense. Two heavyweights going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, two top ten matchups in that category of the game. Coach Ninja, who just gave play-by-play -play for my Syracuse Orange in their battle against Clemson, will now be facing off. It looks like they're going to go with the Marine Corps uniforms. A special occasion in a battle for the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. You see the two teams evenly matched, both at 86 overall. Navy with an edge on offense, Air Force with an edge on defense. Air Force's linebacking core, the strength of their defense, and the running game preventing too many turnovers on Air Force's behalf. In fact, coming into the game, their quarterback has zero interceptions. If Navy can play mistake-free football as well in a home game, if they can play to the best of their ability, they've got a good chance to win this game, but it's going to require blood, sweat, and tears. One recruit coming in for a visit. It's a wide receiver. You see Zach Abey and Perry and Sullivan, the stars for Navy. Musselman, the middle linebacker, an excellent middle linebacker at 90 overall, along with a smart quarterback, Schmidt, and Willis, Wills, the right outside linebacker is an 85 overall, part of that excellent linebacking core. A few injuries to report for Air Force, specifically the right guard and the right tackle. Both going to be out for this game. That's going to be a hit to the right side of the line for the Falcons. Welcome to Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium where the midshipmen sporting the Marine Corps Blues will face off against the Air Force Falcons from Colorado Springs here in Annapolis, Maryland. We thank you for joining us for the second game of our doubleheader, League One action, coming up momentarily. Navy ranked 41st in passing and 122nd in rushing, that is antithetical to Navy's normal MO. But Coach Ninja, adapting to his personnel, has made it a priority to move the ball in any way possible. We'll see against this excellent linebacking core and against this quasi-academy style offense that Air Force runs if it's enough for the midshipmen.
Pre-game adjustments by Coach Ninja. And we are set to get this game underway. Navy's going to kick off. They will get the second half kickoff. Air Force takes it in the paint. They'll start from their 25. First play of the ball game as Air Force takes the field on offense. Navy sporting a 3-2 set on defense. It's a run to the left. Saucier breaks two tackles and he is off and running. That's going to be a touchdown on the first play of the game. A 75-yard run by Joseph Saucier puts Air Force up 6-0 awaiting the extra point. Nine seconds into the ball game. Now Navy with a chance to respond. They receive the kick in the paint. They'll take the knee and they'll start from the 25. Once again, League One does in fact play on Jared's black slider set, black black slider set, providing a large challenge when facing off against CPU opponents. Five wide receivers for the midshipmen. Back to pass goes Aby. Doesn't like the look, and he's going to get sacked. It's going to be an eight-yard loss. Not going to be second and eighteen. From the 17-yard line, Navy looking now to get part of that back. Five wide receivers again. This time, the four verticals is the look. Back to pass goes A.B. Hits the underneath man. A smart check down by the quarterback, A.B. and Coach Ninja. That gets 16 of the 18 back. And now, third and quite approachable. Just two yards to go. For a Navy first down. We're crossing the one minute threshold here in the early going of this rivalry matchup. Navy with the ball on their own 33 coming out in a spread set once again. Back to pass goes A.B. looking and finds a man. The defender dives for the pass, unable to make the play. The ball goes through his hands into the receiver's arms, and it's a Navy midshipman first down. Navy now coming out in the eye. Tight, twin tight end set. Air Force responding with their traditional 3-3-5 defense. Aby hands it off to Perry up the gut. He picks up four on first down. Now going to be second and six for the midshipmen as they approach midfield. Both teams coming into the game with a four and three record. In separate conferences, both teams hoping to improve their position as well as solidify their credentials for potential bull berths. 
Navy lining up in a shotgun wide trips. Finds Perry out of the backfield. That's good for five yards. Now going to be third and one and a half across the midfield stripe into enemy territory. Go the midshipmen. One yard to go. They're going to come out in the spread flex. Once again, a 3-3-5 by Air Force. The Falcons looking to make a stop here. The midshipmen trying to extend. Handoff up the gut to Perry. He stopped short of the first down. Going to be a loss of one. Not going to be fourth and two here as we approach the midway point of the first quarter. As many of you already know, in League One, you're limited to 12 fourth downs for the entire regular season. Navy not looking to spend one here in the early going. Lots of game remaining. Into the end zone for a touchback on a punt. That means the ball will be spotted at the 20, and Air Force will take over in a one-score game. Navy coming out in the 3-3-5. Air Force coming out in the high formation. Hand off to the fullback. He falls forward for a couple extra yards. They're going to count it as five. Looks to be a long five yards on second down. No huddle. Go the Falcons. Man in motion left to right across your radio dial. It's a play action pass. Quarterback scrambling, and he's going to get the first down and more. Two defenders can't bring him down, but the third one does after a gain of 17 yards. First down for the Falcons outside their 40 here on their second possession. Hand off to the left side. Saucier picks up six. Going to be second and four. That's going to drag his average down after the 75-yard run on the opening carry. He's got two carries for 81. Again to Saucier out of the no huddle to the left side. Breaks a tackle, falls forward, picks up 16. And he's out to 97 yards here in the first quarter. Navy gets their play in just in time on defense, but it's not quite enough. Going to be a 31-yard gain to David Cormier. Down inside the 10 to the 5. Navy's defense going to have to stiffen with their backs up against the wall. Looks like it was a false start. We'll look for verification here. Indeed it was. That's going to pull Air Force back 5 yards and create a more favorable position for the Navy defense. They've got a fullback, a halfback, and a tight end in the huddle. Navy looking to respond here in the shadow of their own goalposts. Coming out in the 3-3-5 bear against a I formation. Hand off to the left. No, check that. It's an option to the left. But the midshipmen sniff it out. Going to be a tackle for loss. That's going to send the Falcons back to the huddle. An opportunity for Navy to catch a rest here on defense following several no huddle calls. It's second and goal. Navy gets the play in on defense. Air Force with second and goal from the 11 and a half, 12 yard line. Flexbone, it's an option play. They hand off to the fullback up the gut. The third tackler gets him after a nine yard gain. Now going to be third and goal. Yeah. 
Man in motion left to right. It's an option play. He's got space. He's got the paint. And Air Force has a two-score lead on their first two possessions. Navy's had the ball once. And we're still in the early going. Fourteen nothing is the score, but there's days remaining. They can really demoralize the defense when they drive the ball down the field and a lot of the yards came on the kickoff short of the end zone. Navy's got an opportunity to return here. Gets it out to the twenty. That's where the midshipmen will take over on their second possession. Two and a half minutes remaining in the first frame. Navy's going to come out in 11 personnel. They've got the shotgun wide trips facing off against what appears to be a staggered 3-3-5. Read option to the right side. A.B. off and running. He's almost got the first down. It's going to be second and one. Every coach's favorite down in distance. An opportunity here for Navy to set up a future play. Air Force comes out in the 3-3-5 bear to respond to Navy's twin tight end set. Incomplete pass. Still remains one yard to go for a fresh set of downs for the midshipmen. Navy takes a deep breath and approaches third down here with five wide receivers. Back to pass goes A.B. All three linebackers rush. And Taylor Jackson catches the pass behind those blitzing linebackers and falls forward for an extra yard and a half. Now going to be first and ten for your Navy midshipmen from their own 36. Twin tight ends once again for the midshipmen. 3-3-5 three, three, over for Air Force. Short pass complete. That's going to set up second and approachable. Going to be just two yards, six feet to get another fresh set of downs. Good first down play for the midshipmen offense. Navy lining up with 11 personnel. Looks like a 3-3-5 stack for Air Force. It's a handoff up the gut to Perry, and he picks up the first down and one or two more. It's a three-yard gain. Going to be a fresh set of downs here with 45 seconds remaining in the first frame. No huddle will go the midshipman. Trying to catch Air Force off guard. The fake handoff to Perry draws the defender in, and A.B. able to pick up seven after the fact. Finds the open space in the defense, and it's going to be second and just three. Approaching the end of the first quarter. The ball already out to the 45-yard line. Into Air Force territory. Twin tight end set here on second and three. Handoff up the gut to Perry. He's got enough for the first down and a couple of more. They'll call it a five-yard gain. And with that, we've reached the end of the first frame. It was a frame won by Air Force, but Navy now driving, looking to pull this game back within close range.
Coming to you live from beautiful Annapolis, Maryland. One of the sailing capitals of the world. Plenty of boats out on the Chesapeake Bay during the day. But now, at nighttime, the lights are on and the game is on. Eleven personnel. Fake to the handoff to the, to the halfback. And A.B. on the keeper picks up another seven-yard gain. And once again, going to be second and short. Navy with plenty of options here early in the second quarter. Second down, and they're going to need about three yards to pick up the first down. Three, three, five, Bear. They've got the D lineman packed in tight. Navy audibles at the line of scrimmage. Handoff to Perry. He's stuffed in the backfield. Going to be a loss of one, but it still remains third and four. Shotgun empty tray is the formation call for the midshipman. 3-3-5 three, three, stack with an offset left outside linebacker for the Falcons. Back to pass goes A.B. Looking, finds the man on the sideline. He picks up two. Not quite enough for the first down. We'll check the yard line here. It's at the 33. Rawls coming out to try the field goal for the midshipman. It's a great kick, plenty of power. And he drills the long field goal. It's a 50-yarder. Scott Rawls puts the first points on the board, and Navy stems the tide, reducing a little bit of Air Force's momentum. First points are the hardest. Navy gets them on their second possession. And now looks to respond on defense. He sends this one deep. And it goes into the end zone, down for a touchback. Good drive, solid kick by the midshipman. Now the defensive personnel takes the field, looking to equalize this game with a stop. Heavy pressure, Schmidt escapes it. And you better believe after those broken tackles, three or four of them on that play, that Schmidt's going to be plenty tired. They're going to run the no huddle as they are wont to do. But Schmidt going to be heaving here at the line of scrimmage. Draw play, catches Navy off guard, and Saucier. Draw play again. Saucier tired after that 21-yard run, unable to break multiple tackles this time. He's got caught up in the backfield. It's going to be a loss of one, now second and 11. Air Force not quite in field goal range. Maybe it'd be an iffy kick. Screen pass by Air Force. Navy ready for it. Makes the tackle for loss. It's a three-yard loss. And now going to be third and a mile. Third and 14. Navy trying to stiffen here on defense. 
Villalobos on the rush evades the uh, evades the tackle the tackles made short of the first down that's gonna hold Air Force to a field goal attempt here on fourth and one with five minutes remaining before the half the special teams unit for the Falcons will take the field So despite a 3-1 to one advantage in yardage, Air Force only leading by two scores. Navy now with an opportunity, just shy of five minutes left, to draw this game within a score heading into the half. Trey Walker with the 22-yard return. He's going to set up the midshipmen on their own 19-yard line. 447 and three timeouts for Navy. Shotgun wide trips. Going to be a sack on this play. Now going to be second and 18. And just like the last drive, Navy's going to have to dig themselves out of this hole. They were able to do it once before. We'll see if they're able to do it again. Looking to get seven or more on this play. Set themselves up with a third and approachable. Twin tight end set. Play action pass. Another sack. A spin move by the defensive tackle by Air Force. Freed him up early. And he was able to tackle Zach Aby inside the five. Going to be third and 24. Navy in a hole. In the shotgun and five wide out. Back to pass goes Aby. Looking deep and throws complete to right. He gets a lot of yards back. He gets 21. And we'll see if Navy wants to take a flyer here on fourth and three. They do indeed. Gut check time for the midshipmen. I gotta tell you, I'm really surprised that they aren't gonna just punt this ball away. Five wide set, and he's just shy of the first down. Air Force is gonna get excellent field position, and Navy's gonna hope to hold him to three and then follow that up with a touchdown to pull the game within twenty to ten. That would be the ideal scenario. Still plenty of game left. So far, Air Force out to the quick start, but Navy with a lot of resources, a lot left in the barrel. It's a pass out to the outside, a broken tackle. The second man pushes him out of bounds. Going to be first and 10 after the 14-yard catch. Mike Schmidt, four for four. Mostly a ground game for Air Force so far. Man in motion, handoff up the gut. Tackled after two, going to be second and eight. Navy still in decent position here to hold. That's a sack once again, and just like that, we've got third and long. On third and nine, Air Force coming out with a spread set. Navy responding with the dime. Good hit. Good tackle, limiting Air Force to just three. And now with just over two minutes left in the half, Air Force going to line up for the field goal. You count that as a win, as Navy was able to hold them following the turnover on downs. A touchdown on this next drive for Navy changes everything. 
Anyone who's played this game knows that comebacks are eminently possible. This one's going to be down in the end zone for a touchback. Navy's going to have three timeouts and just over two minutes to work with. They are going to have to get a little bit more aggressive here on this particular drive, and they do indeed coming out in five wide. Interception by Air Force. It is that 90 overall middle linebacker who makes the play. No, it is the strong safety, Gary Mossop Jr., And if Navy can hold them to three, you count that as a win, too, and it remains a football game. Air Force is going to have to go to the two-minute drill. That limits them a little bit in their offensive play calling. Navy responding with the dime and... It's a first down. It's going to be probably a no huddle. No, it's a timeout by Air Force. Mike Schmidt, not the third baseman for the Phillies, makes the catch over the middle. It's going to be first and 10 on the 17. Just under two minutes remaining. Handoff up the gut, and Saucier is stopped, but it might be a face mask. We'll look to see what the flag is. It is indeed a face mask. Going to be first and goal, and Navy's going to have to protect their end zone. Concentration laps right there. The coaches will be giving them an earful for The flag does give Navy an opportunity to reset defensively, get the right personnel on the field. Coming out in the dime set against a spread set by the Falcons. Handoff up the gut. Multiple defenders descend on the ball carrier and they tackle him after a gain of four. That's another timeout by Air Force on the three yard line. 141 remaining in the half. Heavy versus heavy. And we'll see what the flag is. It could go either way. They're going to call it off sides. It won't cost a down. It'll cost a yard and a half in the grand scheme of things. A nearly inconsequential penalty. It moves Air Force a little bit closer, but not as big of a loss as would normally be. Heavy versus heavy once again. Up the gut. There's a flag on the play. Let's see who it's on. Off sides against the defense. It's going to count for six. An Air Force takes a three-score lead. Still, though, a minute and 39 remaining. Navy can pull this back within two scores. If they can move the ball down the field here before the half. Thirty-one yard return by Trey Walker. Maybe down by twenty-four. Still lots of football remaining. On their last drive. Let's see if they can be more successful here. And we'll see how aggressive this defense is when they come back out. I would be surprised. Navy looking to warm up their quarterback. Goes for the short pass. Smart play by the offense. He's short of the first down. The clock's going to continue to move. They'll line up with five wide receivers. Midshipman going no huddle. Complete in space. Extra yards after the catch. It's a 25-yard gain by Taylor Jackson. 
injecting a little bit of life into the Navy offense. Caught, but nowhere to go, and Navy forced to use their first timeout with a minute and six remaining. Second down and ten to go. Ball on the 38-yard line. 38-yard line, the marker. Second and ten. Navy lining up in the twin tight end set. Complete. Lee finds the space between the zones. It's a 23-yard gain. The ball now rests at the 15-yard line. Navy moving. Same play. Same result. It's a touchdown this time for 18 for 16 yards to Amir Lee. Navy gets their first touchdown of the game. Draws within 17. Check that 18. We'll see what the offense does here with this situation. It looks like they're going to go for two. Try to draw within two scores. Two-point conversion is good, and it's a two-score game going into the half. There's a minute remaining. There's 54 seconds remaining. Air Force is going to have to pass on their ensuing drive here, and Navy is going to be ready for it. 54 seconds remaining. It's 27 to 11. If you like a good football game, boy, did we need that. Air Force coming out in the flex bone. Back to pass. Navy was ready for it, and they're forced to throw it out of bounds as Navy prepared for the pass, expected it, and defended it. Now second and ten, four wide receivers, a rare set for Air Force. Second and ten, ball on the 25. The quarter defense this time for the midshipmen. Incomplete pass, that's going to stop the clock. And now it's third down. It's short. Navy calls a timeout. That's going to stop the clock. And with 41 seconds left, the midshipmen are going to get a chance here to draw even closer. A lot of fight left in this dog. What the shit, guys? Place the ball inside the 10 yard line can be a great weapon. He's really got him pinned deep now. Six points and a pretty display of passing was a result of their last drive. Kirk, do you expect the defense to take a different approach here? When this quarterback is on, he is on. It already seems like whatever this defense is trying just isn't working. But maybe if they add just a little bit more pressure... Complete. Over the middle. It's short of the first down. Navy's going to have to spend their last time out. Navy will take their last time out. But they get out of the shadow of their own goalposts. They still have an opportunity to get points here, folks. Do not discount the opportunity of the two-minute drill.
caught. That's a first down. We'll see if they spike it or if they try to run a play. It's going to be a spike. It cost them one second. There's still 19 seconds on the clock. Even a field goal is a win for Navy, a huge win. Second down, 10 to go. Ball on the 18. They come out on an empty backfield. Back to pass is Aby. Looking to the left. He's got the first down and he gets out of bounds with 12 seconds left. From their own 29 yard line, it's first down. We played a half of football here. The Falcons. It's a 16 point game. It's a two score game. And Navy trails 27 to 11 at the break. If you've watched midshipmen games before, they are a second half team. They will receive the second half kickoff. And they can draw within one score on this drive. To lend a little perspective to what just went down in the first 30 minutes. You know who I feel sorry for in that first half? The cool production is on SportsCenter. He's going to try to sift through all of those highlights and come out with the ones he's going to choose to try to make the Sports Center top ten. Da -da -da, da -da -da. No, there's definitely a, a lot to choose from, but that's what you like as a fan. I think the fans, they like that and enjoy that more than they like seeing great defense. They like seeing guys go up and make huge one-handed stabs and guys make big... Navy heated up. Navy defense on the field once again. Navy offense check that on the field once again. The kids know that too, and they're trying to do their best to always, you know, make a huge play, make a big explosive play. Air Force was ready for the read option that time, going to be second 11. And Navy is going to have to stay aggressive. bring the same type of intensity to their call of the second half that David and I brought to the halftime show. Of course, they always do. That's it for us here in the studio. Time to get you back out to the guys for the second half. It's second and 11. Ball on the 39 yard line. Pass complete. That halves the distance. Now third and five. You got to believe that this is four down territory for Navy on this drive. If you're willing to spend two downs, third and five, not such a bad scenario. Third and five coming up. Ball on the 33. Christopher Musselman, the 90 overall middle linebacker, in the space, in the zone, makes the deflection. Now at the 33-yard line, Navy's going to have to convert this fourth down if they want to get points off of this drive. Fourth down, and the offense is still on the field. Makes the clutch catch. Taylor Jackson with a key seven-yard gain. That converts the fourth down, and Navy continues. Twin tie then set. 3-3-5 stack for the Falcons. Up the gut goes Perry. He's got a little bit of room to work with. Finds his way forward for seven yards. Now at second and three, Navy has opportunities here to relax a little. Complete. It's almost a first down, but not quite. But it was only second down. Not going to be third and in inches. So it's third down, and they're just in. 
inches away from picking up the first down. Up the gut goes Perry. He's got the first down. The ball now resting at the 11-yard line. Navy continuing to drive. Read option, A.B. with room to run. Picks up good yardage, it's a six yard gain. He looks to be slightly injured on the play and a quicker, younger, not as smart quarterback is gonna take the field. And this is the ninth play of the current drive. Well, as they take a look at that injury on the sideline, See what this backup can do with quarterback. 11 personnel here for Navy. Touchdown, midshipman. Navy going to check the status of Zach Abey. It looks like he'll be back on the next drive. Hayes able to complete that drive. Find the paint, and Navy draws within 10. 14 straight points by the midshipman. Draws this game ever closer. Flex formation for the Falcons. Handoff up the gut to the fullback. The defense holds him to four. Just the third carry for Cole Fagan here in the third quarter. Navy defense trying to get the ball back for their offense and continue their momentum. Good play by the Navy defense. It's going to be a loss that's going to send the Falcons into the huddle and give Navy an opportunity to come out with a dime or a quarter. Third and eight here on the 27. Eight yards to go. Ball on their own 27. He's going to try and scramble. They tackle him short. It's going to be a three and out. Get 
A.B. sacked for a loss of nine, going to be second and 19. Navy going to have to stay aggressive here if they want to convert. They find themselves in a hole here after that sack. It's second and long. Twin tight end set. A pass play on the horizon. Navy's going to try to take advantage of Air Force staying in a regular defense. They're going to try to get this ball, angle it down a little bit, and try to get this ball behind the defense. It's going to go out of bounds inside, well inside the 30, inside the 25. And Navy's going to need another stop here on defense. They, the, the worst that they can do is allow a field goal. But they'd like nothing more than another three and out or a stop. A, a, a no loss in momentum. Navy having crawled back in this football game. Fagan on the first play of the drive. It's going to be a first down. Pitch out to the outside. Fagan has some running room out inside the 20. Tackled short of the end zone. Navy still with an opportunity to hold him to three. Up the gut, multiple defenders there. They hold Fagan to a gain of four. It's still inside the 10-yard line. Going to be second down. Tackle to the three-yard line. We'll look to see if Navy goes goal line here on third and three. They'll stick with the 4-4. Four, four. Expect a run here from Air Force. Pitch out to the right side. They're in for the score. That's going to make it a 17-point game, but folks, there's still lots of time left. And he converts the extra point. So a five-play, 72-yard drive. And they add seven points to the scoreboard. Boy, this offense right now is just being physical, really controlling the line of scrimmage, and it's opening up some nice big lanes for the running back. The score now, 34-17. He's to the 20. He's tackled at the 25-yard line. Trey Walker takes it 25 yards. This defense has been bringing the blitz and is having success getting to it. They were forced to punt the ball away the last time. 34 17 here, still in the third quarter. On this possession. Down two possessions. This offense has to step up and capitalize on this possession. Quick strike to Jackson. Going to set them up with second and short. Run up the 
Incomplete pass is going to stop the clock. Didn't cost too much time. Complete over the middle, just shy of the first down. That's going to be good for the first down. It's a slide by A.B. We'll see if Navy can get a playoff before the end of the quarter. That's the end of three. It's 34-17. Navy driving. So with one quarter remaining, the Falcons lead 34-17. All right, we're just about set to start action here again in the fourth quarter. Quick throw to Freed. It's going to be just shy. That's going to keep the clock moving, but it is second and inches. They rule it incomplete. Navy can't afford to challenge. They're going to have to save their timeouts. Makes the completion. That's a first down for the midshipman. Man, that's another first down on this try. They've looked really good since they came out on the field. First down, 10 to go. Ball on the 30. Play action pass. A.B. looking. Finds his man. It's incomplete. That's going to stop the clock and allow Navy a chance to get some rest here on offense for anybody who might need it. There could be a couple of backup linemen in. We see a lot of green, but it might be second stringers at a couple of spots. Navy with all the time in the world to collect their thoughts, calm down, and continue this drive. Out to the left side, Lee picks up seven yards. Now third and three. Third down, and they're gonna need about three yards to pick up the first down. They come out in a five wide set. Complete, and he's out of bounds. That'll stop the clock momentarily. Navy getting a chance to reset here. Maybe on the scramble gets out of bounds. Picks up six on first down, second and four. And here's the 14th play of the drive. 14th play coming up here for Navy. Incompletion will stop the clock. 
That's better than a completion in this case. Makes the completion, gets the first down. Zach Freyd with his fourth reception of the ball game. Freyd picks up one. Touchdown, Midshipman. Drawing to within 10 with five and a half to go, looking to get a stop here and continue their comeback. To answer your question, music is life. Well, first off, let me say music is indeed life. But to answer your question, uh, Road to Glory is something that we have both explored and not gotten nearly as much fun as we have out of the online dynasties. We've got several friends in this online dynasty. It is an excuse to keep in good contact with each other. Gets to around the 42. With the tackle. That's a gain of nine on the play. That makes it first and ten. Out to the left side, quarterback keeper. He gets the first down. He's across the midfield stripe. Up the gut. Good defense. Navy selling out on the run to great success. Now going to be second and eight. And once again, so the fullback loses two. Big third down coming here. Long pass, incompletion stops the clock, and Air Force is going to have to punt. That's just what the doctor ordered for Navy. Swagger, whatever you want to call it, when they take the field, they know they're better than you. And as a group of 11. 
11, they play like they know they're going to stop you. And here comes the offense again. They'll try to make it two touchdowns and two possessions. Five guys will be out in the pattern as they're in the shotgun. Back to pass goes A.B. Can't throw it away. It's going to be a loss of 13. I'm going to be interested to see how he responds from this hit and whether or not he comes after his offensive lineman and challenges them to start playing a little bit better. So the sack makes this a second and long. They'll spread the field with five wide. Nope. Dangerous throw. This one's picked off. Incomplete to the offensive player. Complete to the defender, but... If Navy can hold them to three here, they still have a chance. From the 17 yard line, it's first down. 34-24. Tackled for no gain. We'll see if they call it a loss or not. We'll see if Navy if Air Force, rather, they do stay with the no huddle, and Navy stays with the run set. A benefit to Navy that Air Force is staying with this aggressive tone. It takes less time off the clock. It looks like this time, though, they are, no, they do hand it off up the gut, and Navy once again getting them to third and long. Man goes in motion. Air Force is going to snap this with two seconds left on the play clock. That's going to give Navy the advantage of the jump. Complete. He's got the first down, and Navy's going to have to go goal line here to keep them out of the end zone. It's almost like you have an extra wide receiver. He's that good. Good return for Navy. There's a flag on the play that's going to pull this play back. Regardless, Navy has the football. That one's going to put him way back. You just can't block a player from behind like that, or it's going to cost you. You know the offense will be looking to do better this time out. One general rule in any game is to hold on to the ball. If you're in the negative in the turnover department, your chances of winning decrease exponentially. There's a play fake. Fires quickly to the tight end. Brought down. Right Complete for a first down. It's a 21-yard gain to Amir Lee. Really anywhere on the field. But they like to get him the ball in short. No huddle here for Navy. A little more than two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And he's immediately tackled. Lee gets the completion.
34-yard line. First down. They spread the field in the gun with five wide receivers. Navy's going to get a rest here. They've got four yellow offensive linemen. They're going to give them an extra 15 seconds of rest before the snap. Cost them just six seconds. They'll get another opportunity to rest here. Which is good for the Navy offense. Second down and ten to go. Ball on the 34-yard line. Perfect play for Navy. They get the first down. They get out of bounds quickly. It took about four seconds off the clock. Just what the, doc, what the doctor ordered. From the 23-yard line, first down. Less than two minutes in the fourth quarter. A.B. trusted his receiver. There was some traffic there, but he put the ball in the air and trusted his receiver to make the play, and indeed he does. It's first down, and they'll be looking for six points here. Touchdown, Navy. The tight end scored that time. And the ball. 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 Now will take the field, and they hope to have the same success they had on their last drive. <laughs> this offensive coordinator's got to be feeling so good about the execution on this team from his quarterback and his wide receiver. Because again, they put so much time in trying to put a plan together, and to be able to see that actually come into play makes you feel pretty good as a play call. Yards. First down. First and ten. Ball on the 38. Just over a minute left. Up the middle for a nice there it is. There's a first time out for Navy. Navy's going to use their first time out of the half here. Brings up second and five. UT fan. Is that Tennessee or Texas? 
Another timeout by Navy. They've got third down here. An opportunity to get the ball back with a minute left. UT fan, my dad went to Texas. Hook him. Big Longhorn fan. Grew up a Longhorn fan. I was potty trained on a toilet that had a burnt orange toilet seat. And you lifted it up and it played the fight song, The Eyes of Texas Are Upon You. That's going to end this football game. 41-31. Air Force beats their rival Navy. The midshipmen will go to 4-4. Four and four. It's a non-conference game. But a game that the midshipmen would have definitely liked to have had. Disappointing loss, but we're on to Cincinnati. Navy still has four games remaining. They can go eight and four. They can go four and eight. It's going to be up to them. The Falcons came ready to play. Navy put up a fight. They tried to dig themselves out of a huge hole. They were down 27-3. to Credit to the midshipmen. They never gave up. They never stopped fighting. Unfortunately, it doesn't result in the win, but plenty to be proud of by the fortitude of Annapolis. We thank you for joining us here on this League One broadcast. We hope you'll join us next Friday. We're going to take a look here momentarily and show you what games we have in store for you next week. We've got some exciting matchups, I'm sure. Navy unable to stop the Air Force rushing attack. 324 yards for Air Force. Despite leading the time of possession, those two turnovers definitely hurt the midshipmen's efforts as they tried to mount a huge comeback. Once again, credit to them. Credit to Coach Ninja. Never stop trying. Never stop fighting. Just wasn't their day today. But a bright future awaits the midshipmen. Coach Ninja, an excellent recruiter. We expect an onwards and upwards momentum for Navy in the coming seasons. But there's still plenty more to this season. We're going to give you a look here at next week's games. We televise games every week on Twitch. Week 11 games. We're in season 14 here of League One. Week 11 games, we've got Navy at Tulane going on a trip down to New Orleans to face off against the Green Wave. That's a team that Navy's 1-1 one one against. Going to be a good matchup there. Syracuse, my Syracuse Orangeman. Coach Ninja is the voice of Syracuse football. I am the voice of Navy football. My Syracuse Orangemen in a rivalry game against Boston College. Having a rough season at 1-7. But a rivalry game, you throw the records out. Anything is possible. So, a rivalry game this week. A rivalry game next week. Plus, a key conference game. Navy is 3-2 and two in the American. Going to be looking to go to 4-2 and two in the conference. And get their fifth win of the year against the green wave of Tulane down in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in Louisiana. We thank you for joining us. We hope you have an excellent week. Kick its ass.